our speaker is a uh, a brother Reggie Reginald de Tabali, or uh, also known as Brother Reggie. Uh, he is a BS agribus uh, graduate from BS in agribusiness in Visayas State University University, a graduate of Grace Ministerial Academy, and currently a member and preacher from Valley View Baptist Church. Uh, so with the topic hell, the eternal punishment, I give to you Brother Reginald Detabat. <clears throat> Mic test, sound check. Good evening, everyone. Um, once again, thank you for uh, the opportunity to be part of this ministry once again this evening, and um, I'm glad uh, to discuss to you about uh, this topic on hell, the eternal punishment, though this is a very uh, challenging, I think one of the, um, the challenging topics or truths in the biblical doctrine, so I would... Um, um, but we pray that God would uh, bless us in our talk or in our discussion this evening. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to be uh, the speaker this evening. <clears throat> okay. Well, to, to begin, uh, when we talk about hell, this is like uh, the prayer earlier that um, most of the um, most of us probably are not really comfortable to talk about punishment. We are not comfortable to talk about this uh, the doctrine of hell. And there are some people who would say who would just neglect the idea of of this doctrine simply because that they cannot really accept the fact that. In God, how can God, a loving God, an understanding God, can send or could send men to hell, boys and girls, women to hell, and that is just unacceptable. So uh, for many, it is indeed uh, a very challenging uh, realities, but we have to understand when we talk about this doctrine, the, we cannot really afford to neglect that this doctrine has been taught in scripture in a clear, in a crystal clear way. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself was the theologian of this doctrine, the doctrine of hell. And this is very important doctrine. And Jesus himself was giving warning to the Jews and to his uh, disciples of this uh, reality, of this truth. And so it should perpetuate to us this evening, even, uh, even at this very hour. So the warning can be a good thing. Uh, it, that is a good thing. Kung tayo ay, tayo ay mahal ng isang tao, uh, ang tao nagmamahal sa atin ay nagbibigay talaga ng warning, ng babala to, uh, for us to uh, avoid. And this is what the Lord Jesus did. And this is the scripture is talking and this is the scripture uh, is teaching to us this evening and so what we have right now is we have to accept this truth with humility and ac accept this um, uh, doctrine if we are if we are to be faithful in our interpretation and our study of scripture we cannot avoid this doctrine there are many undisputed testimonies about this teaching from the Old Testament to the New Testament, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, like I said earlier, was the, the great theologian of this doctrine. Now, this is just an introductory study of this doctrine. We cannot really tackle everything, but I hope we can discuss something later on. Now, uh, when, we, when, we, uh, uh, when we come to this, uh, doctrine of hell, this is not a, uh, a, a place or a, this is not a realm of, 
of something that is spiritual only, but it is rather a, an eternal place. It is true an eternal place which was created by God. Uh, in Matthew 25, verse 41, this is the indictment of the Lord Jesus Christ to those in the Olivet Discourse. He's uh, teaching his disciples and, and others about the, the coming judgment or the end times. He is indict his indictment to those who will not obey the Lord Jesus Christ. And he would say in the last days or in the final judgment, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So we can see in this text that somehow hell or that hell was created by God. It's, it was not created by the devil or the, the, the enemy or his angels, but God himself was the creator. It is the real place created by God and created for the devil, for his angels and for those who are unsaved, for those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is the picture, remember, in Luke 8. Chapter 8, when Jesus uh, encountered, met with a man with a demon and the legions of demon and the legions of demon were begging the Lord Jesus Christ not to send them to the place of abyss, but rather send them to the herd of swine or pigs. Uh, the, the, the point there is that they understood clearly their destination. They understood their place. The, the, the place that awaits them is the place of eternal punishment, which is hell. And, and that is, of course, true. They understood clearly that, uh, that doctrine of hell. And, of course, for those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, uh, the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord, from the glory of his might. Those who do not know God, those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, will be heading to this place, to the eternal destruction. So this is a serious reality that we cannot really avoid to neglect in our own understanding if we are careful to study this and the undisputed evidences or witnesses in the scripture. Now, Another thing we consider is that it is an eternal punishment. We have to understand this because uh, uh, um, baka later on, ay marami tayong question regarding or objection about the eternality of its punishment. Now, the eternal punishment, let me read to you some key passages. Uh, in Revelation 14, verse 10 and 11, this is the vision of John. Uh, and and uh, pertaining to those who worship or those who are followers and those who are wicked followers of the devil to be tormented with fire or to, to be thrown to the lake of fire and sulfur. John says, if anyone worships the beast and its image, he will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day or night. Revelation 14.10. Now this, this is talking to those who follow, who worship the beast. In other words, those who deny the, the offer of the gospel and follow the standard of this world, the standard of Satan. Uh, those who do not obey the gospel, the offer of salvation. They will drink the, the God's wrath. They will drink in its full strength the cup of his anger they will be tormented in the pre with fire and sulfur 
so far in the presence of the Lamb forever and ever. This is eternal punishment. In Revelation 20, 10 and following, anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. In other words, those who are not included to the new creation of God in Christ Jesus will be thrown into the lake of fire. And again, when the Olivet Discourse of Jesus Christ in Matthew 25, verse 46, uh, his indictment to those who, 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 did not, who, do, who did not do good to him, he says, then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. You see the parallel parallelism, the eternal life for the righteous, but there is this eternal punishment also for the wicked. So this is a very serious topic because we are not talking about temporal things. We are talking about eternal things. And when we talk about the doctrine of eternal punishment, it is indeed eternal in its sense. So the first thing that we have to consider, it is eternal in its duration, unending. It will never end. The Greek word is ionios, ionios. If there's a time, it can be interpreted as the whole lifetime. This is the, the, the picture of the, the challenge of Jesus to his disciples and to, to his hearers regarding mortifying the sins. Sinabi niya, it would be better for, for it would be better if you don't have a complete parts of your body to enter the kingdom of heaven than to, to have a complete parts of the body, of your body, to be thrown into the eternal fire. So that's the, the, the consideration there is not really temporal punishment, but rather eternal fire. And so what we read earlier in 2 Thessalonians 1, 9, the in, eternal destruction. And it is very uh, true when we talk about, when we consider this word ion or ionios, these, are wor these words are used to convey the ex eternal existence of God, the eternality of God. In other words, walang ibang, walang ibang word, walang ibang salita na pwedeng gamitin for the eternal punishment to describe hell rather than this, uh, the use of ion or ionios, the eternal, and, and that is parallel to the eternal definition or existence of God. So the point there is that the final state of the wicked and the lost and the state of the righteous are treated as equal. Equally eternal. So this is um, this should be clear in our understanding when we cut when we think of eternal punishment, when we think of hell, we are thinking it of, of it as eternal. Yeah, as as uh, for those who are in Christ Jesus will also receive eternal life, and for those who are not in Christ Jesus will perish eternally also. Now, second thing that we uh, we can uh, see. In, in the uh, study of this eternal punishment is there is this eternal death also. The language of the Puritans, eternal poverty. It is actually, actually the separation from the presence of God. That is eternal death, the separation from the presence of God. And when we talk about the presence of God here, we're not talking about his omnipresent omnipresence or omnipresent uh, uh, character or attribute, but we're talking about his grace, gracious presence. We're talking about his mercy presence and that, uh, that, that we can enjoy now as we gather together as a church. We pray for God's presence to be, uh, um, to be uh, amongst us 
And that is that is the presence of God, the special presence, the special uh, um, uh, realities that we can experience the goodness and the mercy of God. And so the ultimate poverty of the lost in hell is the suffering from the absence of the gracious presence of God. We can we as we can we we can still experience the presence of God here on earth. Baka, we, we, we see people who are sinning, continually sinning today, men and women who, who seem successful in their uh, in their life and continue in sin. It's not really because of them. It's because of the restraining grace of God. And that is somehow correlated to the presence of God in this world. We are still, uh, we are still uh, uh, embraced or covered by the beauty of the mercy and the grace of God. We call it in theology, the common grace of God. But in hell, all those things are, will, will be absent. So there will no longer be the gracious presence of God, but what's left is the eternal anger, the full strength of his wrath in hell. And that is uh, terrifying. So that is why it is called eternal death. It's not just the separation from the presence of God, but that separation from the presence of God is eternal. And thirdly, it is eternal torment. The wicked will be thrown into the lake of fire, as what we read earlier, the sulfur and fire. And the Lord Jesus Christ described it as unquenchable fire. Ang hindi nagpapaawat na apoy o hindi nagpapapigil. Uh, hindi tumitigil na apoy, and their worm does not die in Mark 9. This is, God, this is Jesus' description of the eternal hell, eternal punishment, the unquenchable fire and worm that does not die. The Puritans would, would say, yung itong interpretation of the worm that does not die, to be a conscience. Yung conscience, if you are... If you are in hell, you will remember every, everything. Maybe your, the prayer of your mother, the prayer of your father, the message that you've heard about the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel, and then yet you neglected the offer of salvation. Those things will be, uh, will be remembered in your conscience, and then you will be weeping with uncontrollable sobbing in hell if you are not in Christ, and there will be gnashing of teeth. Again, the Puritan would say this is somehow interpreted as anger, a deep sense of anger with yourself, with, with God, with your family in heaven, with people around you. This is a, a, a very, very painful reality, term, torment, eternal torment in hell. And this is, uh, we cannot really describe even the terminology or the etymology, cannot fully describe the horrible pain and torment in hell. And this is true, friends. If you're not yet in Christ, or if you're maybe if you're here uh, accidentally, or maybe you're listening because someone invited you to join this meeting, uh, this is the reality of your soul. This is the reality of our soul. If we are not in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to reckon right now our our situation, you know what, the, the idea of fear is, uh, is a biblical concept. Jesus Christ himself said that don't, don't be afraid to those, who, those people who can kill the body, but be afraid to the one who can destroy your soul in hell. So there is this sense of fear, but you know what? The grace of God is so wonderful 
in the love, the love of God, in, in God's love, there is no fear, says John in 1 John. There is no fear in the love of God because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible is saying that none can separate us for those who are in Christ. None can separate you from the love of God nor tribulation, nor pain, nor death, or even the, the death of this horrible thing. So be reckoned, on, Jesus is the only way, he is the only truth, and he is the only life that no one can come to the Father except through him. We are talking here a very serious thing, and so reckon to yourself. The answer, the solution to this problem, the beauty of the gospel is that when you have Christ, when you believe and when you repent of your sin, there is this promise that there is now no condemnation, no eternal torment, no eternal punishment to those who are in Christ. So this is for you, my friend. Uh, if you're listening right now, take this the Bible is saying it is, it is appointed for, a ma for man to die once and then judgment. So uh, that is, uh, that is the, the, the call for those, uh, who, for those who, are not, who are not yet Christians today. And lastly... This is eternal rule, God's wrath in hell. Uh, we, we can see in the movie that somehow, somehow Satan is the one who rules in hell. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you can see the influence of John Milton, Paradise Lost, and also even the Divine Comedy, the picture there was that Satan is somehow the ruler or somehow influencer and the, 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 the powerful in, in hell while Jesus and God is in heaven. But that is not true. God alone reigns in hell while Satan and his followers, those who are unsaved, will suffer in agony. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in heaven, on earth, and even under the earth. The people, every one of us will recognize that God alone reigns in our life, in heaven and even in hell. So that's the, the consideration when we think of eternal punishment. Eternal in its duration, eternal in its eternal death and poverty, eternal in its torment, and there is this eternal influence of God's wrath in hell. He is in control, and Satan will be will be suffering because of the consequence of the great sin. Now there is an objection, of course. The reason why the many are uncomfortable with this doctrine, because they cannot. And if we are just basing on our man-centeredness, we can say that this is too much. The objection is that the suffering and the duration are severe and unfair to the wicked and do not does not really align with God's love with the love of God and somehow because of this it led to the idea that all men will be saved the idea of universalism and some would also reckon to believe that yes there can there can be punishment there may be a punishment for a period of time but the loss will be extingu extinguished into non-existence that's annihilation annihilationism well this is this is a, an 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 a, 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 an alternative a wrong al alternative of uh, man centeredness or hum spirit of humanism that is focused on ourselves rather than on god 
the answer to this objection is this, the gravity of the sin committed depends on the dignity of the person whom the sin is committed against. We are not sinning against man. We are not sinning against our parents, but we are sinning against the holy God. Where the cherubim and seraphim and, and all the angels could not look up, look, could not stare the glory of God, and here we are confidently saying that, you know, we can enjoy the fellowship with God in heaven. We can enjoy the, 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 the beauty of his, his, his creation in heaven. And, and, and we, can, we, can, uh, we can just approach God in, 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 uh, what, what, in whatever we can do, whatever we can uh, uh, approach in, in, in that presence. No. God is holy. And we are not offending our, our colleagues or our friends or our parents, but we're offending God. And all of us are falling short of the glory of God because of our sins. So that is the idea. There is really the gravity of our, sin, of our sins committed. Listen to Waldron. Any doctrine of the love of God, which ends up doubting or denying the doctrine of eternal punishment, is a false doctrine. It is a doctrine which emasculates God by underestimating his perfect justice and by minimizing the radical evil of sin. When we think that, you know, God is love, God is wonderful. God is, is a glorious, merciful to us. Yes, that's true. But if your belief would lead to doubt of the eternal punishment, then what you what what's your your understanding of the doctrine of the love of God is actually false. And you are underestimating the justice of God. You are minimizing the evilness of sin, the sinfulness of sin. And we are talking here of our own inability, total depravity, that what we need is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only way. The Bible is saying he is the only way. He is the, the no one can come, not even with our uh, with our uh, good works, but only Jesus Christ. And second answer to this objection, the cross of Christ stands or falls with the doctrine of eternal punishment. You cannot really say that Christ, that God loves us so much when we deny the doctrine of eternal punishment. This is the very reason why there is love. There is the reason, the very reason why God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that those who believe in Christ will not perish but have eternal life. This is the, 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 the main reason of the atonement of Christ. Listen to Culver. The doctrine of hell stands behind and enforces the need for the incarnation of the Son of God, his sinless life, and especially his substitutionary atonement. It enforces the need for the incarnation. If, 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 if we believe like Jehovah's Witness that there is no hell, then what's the need for Christ to come and die for us? When your offer of salvation is just an opportunity for you to be in paradise. And if you're not, if, you're, if you don't follow, then you will just be gone. It enforces, this doctrine enforces the need for his righteous, his active obedience and his passive obedience. So that we can have the righteousness of Christ. We can be imputed 
of the righteousness of Christ and we can be declared by God as righteous because of Christ and our sins, the penalty of our sins can be atoned because of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Christ is the only way, not us, not our parents, not our education or not our achievements in life. Christ is the only way to eternal life. And let me give you an application for this short study. There is this need of grace. Again, let me implore these things. This is a very serious um, thing, but God is infinitely gracious. God is infinitely loving. That when sin abounds, when you think that no one, when you think that no one can save your own souls, grace abounds all the more. When you think that sin is the champion, grace is the super champion, and he can save your soul. Don't listen to the, to the whispering lies of the world, the world that, that is saying, the, the world that says that, you know what, you can enjoy your life right now because you don't have to be, you don't have to worry after you die. And then when you face the eternal reality, there is God. There is God who, who will give away his holiness. There is God who is understanding and loving, who will let you in into the eternal kingdom of God. That is a lie. That is a lie, friend. If you are heading to hell, then God's wrath, God's anger, God's fury is your closest companion. And so, Reckon yourself to God. Be reconciled to God and repent of your sins and believe the gospel offer that Christ died. He died on the cross of Calvary so that anyone who believes in him will have eternal life and will never perish. That's his promise. And that's wonderful. And for us Christians who are professing Christians right now, Jesus is bringing the doctrine of hell to bear on our conscience. He says in Matthew 5 that if, you're, if your right hand is sinning or causes you to sin, or if, you're, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, cut your hands off. Because it would be better for you to be incomplete, to be blind, or to be crippled, to enter heaven, rather than to be complete, to be thrown into the eternal fire. So this is this, there is the relationship of our sanctification. Are you continually uh, mortifying your sins? Are you continually growing of the quickening of your grace? that God has gifted you. That is the sanctification process. So are we growing continually brothers and sisters in Christ? There's a good book, Heaven and Hell by Edward Donnelly pertaining to this doctrine. He said, no matter how long you have been a professing Christian, the evidence that you're not going to hell is the way in which you deal with personal sin. So no matter how long we, we've been professing Christians, the only evidence that we are not going to hell is the way in which we deal with our personal sins. So brothers and sisters, are we growing continually in our mortification of sin? Can we say that we are victorious right now, victorious today of our sin yesterday thirdly is seriousness seriousness that would lead us to serious evangelism serious sharing of the gospel of christ christians are called to be serious about the reality of eternal destiny grudem has something to say about this what are we to think of this doctrine the doctrine of hell it is hard and it should be hard if our hearts are never moved with deep sorrow 
then there is a serious deficiency in our spiritual and emotional sensibilities. If we are not moved with this doctrine, really, there is a problem in our spiritual sensibilities and even our emotional sensibility. And because of this, it would compel us to the great work of evangelizing, uh, using and proclaiming the word, proclaiming the gospel to the lost. Listen to Spurgeon. If sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our dead bodies. And if they perish, let them perish with our arms wrapped about their knees. If hell must be filled, let it be filled in the teeth of our exertions and let no one go unwarned and unprayed for. So we also you see the evangelistic zeal, the idea of this doctrine, the understanding of the doctrine of hell should also compel us to share the gospel, to pray for those who are not yet in Christ Jesus, to wrap our arms, uh, to hold them and embrace them about their knees, leading to the imploring them that they should not go to hell. Are we filled with exertion? Are we filled with evangel? Are we filled with the gospel and evangelizing compassion to the lost? And may God help us grow in this aspect. This help us. This doctrine would help us think and also help us do evangelism. And lastly, is worship. Worship to God. The doctrine of hell moves us to adore him who gave himself for us. The previous text of Revelation 20 was the proclamation of the God of God's glory and worshiping God's honor and holiness and the beauty of his eternal judgment. If we understand rightly of our own sinfulness and our own destination, that we deserve hell rather than heaven, we will, we are, we will move to worship and to adore him because he is the one who saves us from this eternal punishment. Are you worshiping God? Are we loving more and we adore, are we adoring? Do we love Christ more knowing that he is our savior? My friends, this is also a challenge for all of us and for all of you who are hearing this message. May God help us. May God help you to consider your life and to think of etern eternal destiny. Yesterday, I, my son, uh, uh, my son um, was uh, turning 15 months young. And he was uh, he, he is now or already walking around and, and, and trying to do things that he should not do. Um, I recently, when when I saw him walking around and he's, he's, he tried to step on an electrical wire, electrical uh, outlet. And I grabbed him immediately because it was very dangerous. But he could do that. He could. He can, he can do whatever he wants because he, he cannot really spot the danger. And that's the point. We are no longer children. You are no longer a child. You can now spot the difference. You can now spot the danger. You can know exactly the, the, your direction right now. And the word of God is telling you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, repent and, and be reconciled to God for because this is the day of salvation. Don't listen to the world. And you are now, uh, you are now grown, a grown man and woman. And you are even studying in this prestigious university 
of Los Banos of Elbi. And it means you can now discern what is right and what is wrong. You can now set a plan. And there is the offer of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, grace abounds all the more. You can have Christ right now. Believe him and ask him to lead you to everlasting life. Before we entertain into uh, with some questions, uh, let us pray for a moment. Let's pray. Our gracious God and eternal Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us time to um, think of eternal destiny, eternal reality, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation you that the offer of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, we even praise you for giving us the reason why there is love, the reason why there is glorious reality of salvation, by understanding the dreadful reality of those who will not obey the gospel, who, who, who does not know who, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray, O oh God, that you would be gracious to save sinners even this evening. And may your word be truly an encouragement to all of us and would lead us to worship you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Thank you, Kuya Reggie, Brother Reggie, for your talk. Uh, so now we can move forward to our Q&A. But just a few reminders first before we move forward. Uh, please uh, keep your questions short and to the point so that we can have more time for as many questions as possible. Uh, please also avoid asking questions regarding very specific cases uh, that might involve sharing private information. And for questions here via Zoom, uh, to ask live, you please raise your hand to be acknowledged and wait to be called. And you can also send a Zoom chat uh, to our uh, Zoom host, uh, Sister Elisa. And for questions via Facebook Live, please send your questions in the comment section, or you can likewise send a private message to the RCM. FB page. Your questions will be uh, read to the speaker as time permits. Uh, with that, uh, we will now be going to our Q&A. Uh, we have a question here, Brother Reggie. Yes. Are billions who are not Christians, is it just for the so-called, is it just for the so-called loving God to send them to hell eternally? Um, the idea really is the, um, the reason behind that question is uh, the spirit of humanism, that we are more concerned of man's, um, man's situation rather than of God's um, matter. Uh, the, the Bible is, is completely God-centered Bible. Even in the Old Testament to the New Testament, God is the focus. Christ is the focus. And, and like I said earlier, we, we cannot really, we cannot blame them because we're all sinful. And uh, we, we try to, we try to, um, to reckon this in our hearts as, as sinful as we are. But we are also called to have faith in Christ. We are also called to have faith. And when we have faith, true faith in Christ, we believe what Christ is saying. We believe what God is saying in the scripture. 
the idea there, um, what we can we can say in in Matthew seven that Jesus himself mentioned that the the wide and and broad is the gate that leads to eternal des destruction, but narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life. It means means there is the a, a great um, imbalance proportion uh, for people to really uh, go to the 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 wide and 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 uh, broad gate that would lead to destruction. Uh, we cannot really explain everything, but that is what our Lord is saying. And therefore, we are asked to really have uh, faith in him. But instead of asking why God, let, let's ask um, how we can be reckoned, how we can be reconciled. Um, and, and I think uh, no one is righteous, no one seeks God and and for that it's that is enough for us to to be sent to hell rather than to question God why there are so many people who will be heading to hell rather than heaven so I hope that answers um, the question brother Joseph thank you we are ready um, uh, there's another question. Uh, is hell a real place? What eviden evidence or evidences are there available to substantiate its existence? Uh, there are many claims right now, or even, you know, previously. Um, there are many claims of um, men and women visiting heaven and hell, you know. Um, but of course, those are just those are are just uh, claims, personal claims. Uh, they can only the 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 thing is they can uh, they can only be verified by themselves alone. And and what we can what we can do. As, as Christians here is that we can we can be convinced by the witnessing influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We can believe the Lord Jesus Christ and he, he even said that those of those um, he said uh, of, of this of his ship, his ship will hear his voice and will listen to his voice. And how can we listen to his voice? We can listen through his word. And we can confidently and and uh, fully uh, trust His word, His promises, by the influence and the illumination of the Holy Spirit. So that that's the only evidence. And and uh, when we when we say, um, how can you how can you say that the the, the Scripture is really telling you the truth about hell? Well, even the historians or even those um, uh, unbelievers in the old uh, in the ancient world uh, could testify that this scripture is is uh, credible, and, and 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 Christ is saying so. Christ is saying this uh, doctrine about hell. Then uh, we have uh, we have great confidence to believe. The, his his teachings. Thank you, Reggie, for that answer. Um, <clears throat> I have another question here. Uh, for a lifetime of sin, for example, 80 or even 100 years, why is the punishment eternal instead of just 80 or 100 years also? Isn't it unjust? Again, um, we... Um... I, I mentioned it earlier. Yeah, again, uh, the the gravity of sin committed is not really uh, is not really about um, the the sin committed is about the dignity of uh, the person whom 
the sin is committed against and that's 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 true we are not sinning against man we can be forgiven by man we can be forgiven by our parents and our loved ones but uh, but in order for us to reckon the bible is completely true to that there is only it is the only way is the righteousness of christ that man needs to be imputed with the righteousness of christ that man needs to be um paid or his sins needs to be paid by the death and the atonement that christ wrought on the cross of calvary so um the the idea is man centeredness but uh, we believe uh, sola scriptura sola christo eh, christ alone by faith alone so yan ang ating kaligtasan uh, mga kapatid and then kaibigan thank you for the answer kuya reggie um we have another question here um Ano po ang best approach in correcting someone who just lost a loved one na deep believer since we cannot com comfort them that their loved one is now in heaven? Um, I, I don't really know exactly how. Um, we, we do... Uh, uh, that, that, that must be really... A sad uh, reality in in our life to somehow comfort uh, someone uh, na hindi pa ligtas ang, ang nawala. But uh, probably the, the the best approach really is to to uh, present Christ um, to that friend of yours. You know, uh, must. Um, wala na tayong magagawa. We have that uh, idea. Uh, wala na talaga magagawa. We cannot advise him that you know, just pray for for the disease and and, and he, he or she will be in heaven. Hindi hindi po yan biblical. But there's still hope for that person, and it is it is your job to comfort him with the gospel, with the word of Christ. And um, he can do um, miracle. He can. He can. Uh, Christ can can do uh, um, miracle in saving that person who is uh, who is still alive. So I, di ko alam kapatid on how to really comfort in in uh, pertaining in relation to the the person. Who, who was deceased and passed away already. Thank you again for your answer, Kuyre. <clears throat> yes. Uh, we would like to just remind everyone, if you have any questions, uh, here for those here in Zoom, you can message it or Zoom host or uh, message it in the chat. And for those in FB Live, you can comment your questions or message our FB page. Uh, we have another question for here. Um, how should we include the doctrine of hell in our evangelism? There are people who come to Christ to ex escape eternal punishment in hell, but no genuine, genuine faith in him. Um, we should. Um, yeah, the first thing is that we, we, should, uh, we should include that. Um, that, that is part of the proclamation of the gospel uh, or else um, it's not really a gospel. Maybe it's just a, a maybe prosperity gospel or something. And um, that you include the, the, uh, the standing that we are lost and we are dying spiritually because we cannot, we cannot uh, fulfill the law the, the moral law of God and, and and because of that we are we are lost uh, Romans 3 uh, 23 all have seen and fall short of the glory of God 
Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. So um, we, we, we can be clear on, on that aspect. And, and, and uh, the punishment of sin is death. Uh, that, means, um, that means eternal punishment. It's not just death uh, uh, to, to just to die physically, but to die spiritually or even death already. Those who are not in Christ are already condemned, says John. So, so I, I think uh, it's impossible to present the gospel without tackling this uh, reality, the, real, the, the realness of eternal punishment. Uh, I cannot really imagine how we can present the gospel without dealing with this doctrine. So um, bring this doctrine, of course, you have to balance. And of course, um, like I said earlier, the grace is, is greater. Uh, Titus uh, 2.11, uh, the grace of God has appeared to all men. In other words, everyone is, uh, is um, everyone has a chance or everyone can, can receive the gospel if, they, if he or she believes um, the, the offer of the gospel. There is the, the wonderful free gifts offered of, of Christ to all sinners, the universal offer of the gospel to all sinners. But of course, you have to include the, the reality of death, the spiritual death, that we are dead in our sins and that we need to be made alive in Christ Jesus. So, um, brother or sister, we can... We, can, um, we cannot separate that, uh, this doctrine, uh, when we preach the gospel, when we share the gospel to anyone. Thank you, Prayer Reggie, for the answer. Uh, we have a related question, but on the side of the, the person being ministered to. Um, is the fear of hell a valid reason for one to come to Christ for salvation? Some people say that if one is driven to salvation solely through fear, it is not right. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's not right. Um, uh, I, that there, there's a danger of that. I think John is really careful in, in stating that in, in God, God is love and in love there is no fear. Uh, he is very clear of that aspect, there, there is no fear of punishment, fear of, of death. And because of the love of God, uh, we, man, was, man must, must be, be able to realize the goodness and the beauty of the gospel to the point that he is willing to, to die to self. He is willing to turn away from his sins and embracing the love of God in Christ Jesus. Not, not, not embracing God because of fear. You, you cannot embrace God uh, based on your fear, but embracing God because of his wonderful work of salvation that you can say to yourself that um, Christ is, is precious enough. And 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 uh I, I think I think it's wrong if if someone um, um, uh, fear like I said earlier is a very instrumental uh, because it is a biblical concept Jesus said himself mismo katakutin katakutan ang ang makapagpatay ng inyong katawan but ang katakutan ninyo ang the the one who can destroy your soul and there is there merong sense and merong 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 grace in the fear of god but that fear should not be uh, the the fear na yung tinutukoy na yun lang ang makapagliligtas because of fear uh, reckon to the lord lord's love for sinners john 316 is very clear we should not forget the the word love there um, even in Ephesians 1, that um, those who are chosen, uh, God, God loved those who are uh, his. So the love is very important. 
uh, concept of our in our salvation that we are saved from the punishment of eternal punishment simply because of the love of God in Christ Jesus. So we, we should we should uh, be careful in sharing the gospel, not na hindi tayo share that um, merely just um, ang takutin lang natin ang, ang isang tao para siya ay uh, para siya ay matatakot and it's it's not it's not even liberty and freedom. Uh, Jesus said, "Come to me who are uh, heavy laden." And I will give you rest. And you cannot have rest when you're always uh, f- uh, afraid. You know? um, so I-, I-, I think there's something wrong in that concept. Thank you, Priya Reggie. Uh, here we have our last question for tonight. Um, can a person still be saved while believing or holding on to Universalism or annihilationism? Um, I, I think I think that is valid uh, because uh, the the salvation is not really it's not really about believing those things. Uh, I think you can you can still you can be Christian and then after that is uh, questioning the the destiny of the unsaved. Uh, there are good Christians. Example of this is John Stott, uh, who believes the um, annihilationism, and uh, I, I think we can say that he's a, a very very he was a very um, noble Christian. Uh, I, I think um, a professor Dinian or our teacher, ni, ni Pastor Noel. And, and uh, may, maybe because of his love for the loss. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm sometimes tempted to believe <laughs> that kind of uh, belief because um, we, have, we, we have to accept there are there are loved ones. There are, we have loved ones who, who died uh, without Christ. I have my beloved um, uh, Lola. Uh, I, it's very painful for me. Uh, sometimes, um, sometimes because of because of your love for for the person, and, and uh, you, you 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 want you are tempted to to believe. Uh, that that somehow God would be would be gracious to to uh, to somehow limit the punishment, but uh, of course that's not faithful uh, disposition. Uh, remember in 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 Revelation Revelation nineteen before the the uh, the exploration or even the explosion of the anger and God's wrath, there is rejoicing in heaven. There is rejoicing in heaven. They're singing and they're crying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and power to our God for his judgments are true and just. His judgments are true and just. Our judgment is tainted with bias, but the judgment of God are true and just. And that is why in heaven we will worship Christ. We will worship God even in his hands, in his pouring out his full strength of wrath in hell with our loved ones. We cannot understand it right now, but... uh, Later, we will also join with the believers and the saints in heaven, worshiping Christ, worshiping God for his display of his justice and judgment to all sinners. So uh, I think uh, it's possible, uh, brother or sister, it's possible to, to be saved uh, when, when, you have, when you have that kind or later, siguro later you realize the the, the, the gravity of sin, the gravity of 
the the loss um, you you can be tempted to to believe that but if you really persist and then you know um it, that would affect your own self then um you have to um you have to balance and you have to study the word and and be truthful and uh, be obedient to his word <clears throat> Thank you again, uh, Kuya Reggie, for answering the questions and for your talk. Uh, really, it is a, a reminder, uh, this, this uh, reality of hell, and I hope it would be a reminder for us Christians and how we approach uh, our evangelism and even in our pursuit of holiness. And for those who are not in Christ to see that and to uh, really understand this uh, this reality of hell and uh, uh, with that uh, we will be closing tonight's session but before that I would just like to add a few more announcements before we end tonight uh, we there is a handout that we uh, that can be provided for those who is who wish to, uh, to who wish to have a copy of this handout uh, you can message our F our RCM FB page afterwards and we will uh, send you a copy of it after the FB Live.